Are you using the Clubhouse app and wondering how does this thing work? In today's video, I'm gonna help get rid of all your frustrations and all of your headaches and show you exactly what you need to know to crush it with Clubhouse. Let's do this. What exactly is Clubhouse? Clubhouse is a live audio app and it's an amazing experience where you can go into any room and listen to people talk on a wide breadth of topics you can take the stage you can participate with people all over the world and here's the interesting part when that live room is done it's gone forever nothing is recorded and this creates an incredible fear of missing out mentality that causes people to spend countless hours on the app the great thing about Clubhouse is it's like networking on steroids. You can make absolutely amazing connections very, very rapidly and discover really rich interactive content. If you wanna make the most out of Clubhouse, you need to know what the pros are doing. In today's video, I'm gonna break down absolutely everything you need to know. Now we have broken this into multiple chapters. You can find those chapters in the play bar and in the description below, and you can jump right to whatever you wanna learn. And if you stick around to the end, I've got an amazing bonus on how you can get discovered on this awesome platform. So let's get familiar with the basic functions of a room. A room in Clubhouse is just like a room inside of a conference hall. You walk into a room and you first see people up on the stage. Whenever you're inside of a room, you can click the leave quietly button and very, very easily leave the room. The raised hand icon in the bottom center of the app allows anyone in the room to click it and then the moderators are notified and they can decide to bring you up on the stage. In some cases, the raised hand feature will be grayed out and that is because the moderator decided to turn off the raising hands feature. And when that happens, everyone in the room is notified that the raising hands feature has been turned off. This is usually done when you're in a room and they're doing some sort of a presentation and they don't wanna be distracted by anyone raising their hands, but that can always be turned back on by the moderator whenever they want to. The plus sign allows you to ping in someone who you are following into the room. So if you're in a room and you find some content really interesting, you can hit that plus sign and you can search for individuals and you can click on them and all of a sudden they will be pinged right into the room. Anyone who's speaking inside the room will have a shape around their head and that's how you know who's speaking. The mute sign in the bottom right hand corner is how you mute and unmute yourself. Now here's something really interesting. When you are on the stage, and someone on the stage says something really valuable, you can mute and unmute yourself in rapid succession as a way of applauding. And by doing that, that's sending a signal to everyone in the room that I appreciate what Mitch just said. Whenever you go up on stage, the general protocol is to always mute yourself. If you forget to do that, sometimes moderators will do that for you. This just allows the background noise to kind of be removed from the app. Now, one of the cool things about being in a room is you can go ahead and click on any person's bio. It can be someone on the stage. It can be someone in the audience. If you click on someone's bio and then you swipe up, you can see how many followers they have and who is following them. You can click on who this person is following. And when you do that, you're gonna to begin to see a series of clubs that this person follows. And as you continue to scroll down the screen, all the individuals that this person is following, and you might begin to want to follow some of these other people. Here's why this is important. There is an algorithm that makes a decision about what content to show you based on who you are following. There's also a bio that describes what this person's all about. And if you go to the very bottom, you will also see access to this person's Twitter account and their Instagram account. And this is really important. There is no private messaging on this app. This is why you want to for sure attach your Twitter account and attach your Instagram account, even if you're not active on these platforms. Because a lot of people will check you out and they'll say, hey, I was in a clubhouse with you and I loved what you said. A lot of the networking happens off platform over on Instagram. At the very bottom of someone's bio are the clubs that they belong to. Now, clubs are a fascinating facet inside of Clubhouse. Clubs create their own content and clubs have members and followers. So if you look at the, all these clubs, these little tiny circles, you can click on any one of them, for example, the OG club, and you can see what that club is all about. You can see who the creator of that club is because they're the very first person listed on the app. You can begin to follow some of the people in the club. There are clubs on everything you could possibly imagine. I belong to the Star Wars Universe Club. I'm hoping to start a social Social media examiner club so the key thing is you want to follow clubs and if possible you want to join clubs this will help create a better experience within the app when you click on someone's bio you have a couple of options one option is to obviously follow them now here's something really important to understand there is a bell to the left of the bio if you click on that bell 
it will say always, sometimes, and never ever. The magic of this app is that whenever someone you follow goes up on the stage, you get notifications. And these notifications can get a little crazy because some people take the stage a lot. There are some people you might not ever want to be notified when they go up on the stage. The default is sometimes. But there are some people that you always want to be notified when they go up on the stage. And in that case, you want to click always. And when you do that, it's gonna change the icon the way you see right here. To the right of following is also a little icon that has some stars inside of it. If you click on it, it's going to show you people that are like that person and it allows you to scroll through and find other people to follow. I'm gonna share a little bit more about setting up your own profile, but if you love what you've heard so far, please click the like button, it really makes a difference. You will see your photograph in the upper right hand corner. If you click on that, this is where you can begin to edit your profile. Now I wanna draw your attention to the gear in the upper, upper right corner. The first thing that you'll notice is the notifications that come up. What I strongly recommend is you turn off trending rooms and you choose frequency to very in frequent. Trust me on this one because you're going to get notifications nonstop if you don't set it to very infrequent. I also want to draw your attention to interests. When you first set up this app, you probably were asked to push a couple of different buttons to indicate what you're interested in. But there's a lot more located here under interests. For example, if we scroll down to the one called Hustle, this is where you can find entrepreneurship, small business, clubhouse. And if you go under tech, for example, you can find marketing. I recommend you click on everything that you're interested in because this helps helps tell the algorithm the types of content that you're interested in. We're still in the room together. We're gonna to now click on all rooms. When we click on all rooms, we're still in the room and you can always get back there just by clicking on those two first two faces in the bottom left. In addition, you can still raise your hand, you can still peace out, you can still mute and unmute yourself. But while you're in the room, you can peruse what's known as the hallway. And in the hallway, you're gonna see all sorts of content that has been algorithmically curated based on your interests, based on the clubs that you belong to, based on the people that you follow. Now, depending on what time of day you're in the app, you might not see a lot of activity going on. So if you go all the way to the bottom, you're gonna see a little button that says explore. And that's gonna open up a lot more opportunity for you. For example, Undercover Billionaire Q&A with Grant Cardone. You're also going to see this big green button that says Start a Room. And it's always going to be there and it's always going to be alluring to you. Start a room, start a room, start a room. So when you click on Start a Room, you're going to see a couple of options that come up. First of all, there's open rooms, there's social rooms, and there's closed rooms. Open rooms are spontaneous rooms that you can create and people will just pop into automatically. Social rooms are only for the people within your social network. Closed rooms are only for people that you follow. You can tell you're in a closed room because there's gonna be a lock sign next to it. The important thing about starting a room is to click add a topic. This is where you get the opportunity to write in a description of the room. Once you're done with that, I'm just gonna say uh, test, you hit set topic. And you can always edit that before you start the room, but you cannot edit it after you've started the room. If you're gonna start up a room, consider making someone else a moderator just in case, for whatever reason, the app boots you out of the room. That way the room will not be closed. In addition, when you are a moderator of a room, you have the ability to ask anybody from the audience straight up on the stage whether they've raised their hands or not. You also have the ability to mute people as they come onto the stage. In addition, you can take anyone and you can move them back to the audience, or you can go ahead and give them full moderation status. Someone is a moderator when they have the little green dot next to their face and they have full control of the room just like you do. In addition, the moderator can decide to turn on the hand raising feature if they want to. Any moderator can take a room that is private and click the open it up button and all of a sudden it becomes a public room. If you decide to do that, you just want to make sure you title the room appropriately. I've had typos in rooms before and had to restart rooms before I open them up to the public. All right, we're still in the room. We're going to click back into the hallway. When you're in the hallway, you can swipe left and all of a sudden you're going to see every person that you follow and what rooms that they're in. This little telephone looking icon on the bottom right will, will be the same as the swipe left. For example, I can see that Judy Fox is in a room called Day 2 of 5. Subi Zimmerman is in the room called what it takes to run a $1 million business likely. I can click on any one of these faces and I can go right into that room or on their description. Now to the right, you will see a little green icon that has plus room. If I click that, it's going to prompt whoever is one of my followers in here to come into a private room with me. So don't click that unless you really want to. As you continue to scroll down, you'll notice that the dot on 
the face of individuals goes from dark green to light green and there's a minute indicator. It tells you how long it's been since those individuals have been on the platform. I want to draw your attention to what happens up here on the top of the app. The magnifying glass opens up an incredible opportunity for you to discover people to follow and clubs to follow. If you click on it, first thing you'll notice it says find people in clubs and you can type in Stelzner for example and you can see there I am and you can go ahead and follow me. If there was a club called Stelzner you could click on clubs and find it. In addition, there is the people to follow. The first amounts of people that you're gonna see in here are people who have your phone number in their contact on their phone that you might know. After that, you're gonna to begin to see people that are algorithmically people that the app thinks that you're interested in. As you continue to scroll down, this is the equivalent of a directory of all the clubs on Clubhouse. For example, if you remember under Hustle were some interesting categories. One of them was Instagram. So if we go on Instagram, we're going to see people interested in Instagram and we're also going to see clubs that are Instagram related. And this is an awesome way for you to begin to discover a lot more people to follow and clubs to follow so that that curation of content in the hallway becomes highly customized to you. It's worth saying that there are thousands of rooms going on at any given time and you're only seeing a small fragment of them. That's why it's so important to make sure that you curate your interests and you're following appropriately within this app. Let's talk about the notifications bell. It's gonna be red when there's important notifications. You're gonna notice the amount of people who have started following you. You can click on this little paragraph and you can scroll through the list. And if you recognize anyone, you can begin to follow them. As of this recording, this is an invite only platform. Now, this is where you'll find your invitations. This envelope with the star indicator at the top, if you click on it, you will see how many invitations that you have. Now, it's very important for you to understand that as of this recording, these invitations are only going to work for someone who has an iPhone or who has an iPad. You need to make sure that they're listed in your phone directory, in your contacts list. That's how you can send an invitation. If you're super active on the platform and you are giving away your invitations, you will get more invitations. I started with one invitation, then all of a sudden I got three invitations and I got four invitations. So don't feel like you have to hold on to your invitations. Feel free to give them away because every week you might get more invitations. One other little ninja hack. If someone you happen to have in your contacts directory is new to the app, you will notice a little number sign that shows up in the bell and you will have the choice to allow them to get to the top of the line and get into the app without using one of your invites. So if you see that bell, you might wanna consider doing that and here's why. If you click on anyone's profile and scroll to the bottom, you will see who nominated them. Them. And that affiliation is tied to that profile forever. And there are some people you really want to let into the app because if they take off on the app and a lot of people check out their profile, they might see you at the bottom as the person who nominated them into the app. Back in the hallway we are, you'll see at the very top, there's also an icon that looks like a calendar. It's going to show you events that have started within the last hour. And as you continue to scroll down, you can see all of these different events. And if you click the bell, you will be notified when these events start. And when you start an event, you can go ahead and you can assign different people to the event. You can click in on these people and check them out and see who they are. And you can also share this on Twitter. You can copy a link, you can add it to the calendar. If you don't see anything that's interesting to you, go back up to the top and click on all upcoming. All upcoming will literally show you the entire swash of events that people have put on the calendar. Not every room is calendared. As a matter of fact, quite a few rooms are not calendared at all. So what you see in the calendar is just those who have gotten organized enough to plan a room. But this opens you up to an entirely new opportunity to find new people, find new rooms, find new information, find new friends. You may want to put some of these on your calendar depending on if you've turned notifications off so you remember to actually go in and experience the event. As I promised earlier, I'm going to share my ninja tips on how to get discovered on Clubhouse. The directory is keyword rich. So it's really, really important when you craft your profile that you write it in such a way that it contains words and phrases that people might wanna search for. For example, social media marketing geek, Mike Stelzner. 
people were looking for my name and they didn't think to put Michael because they know me as Mike. So I had to put Mike Stelzner in the description. As you write out your description, you're going to want to put words in there that might show up in the search engine. When you're in a room, people are going to look at your profile and try to discern whether you're someone they want to follow or not. So even if it's uncomfortable for you to brag a little bit, you should share some of the things that you have accomplished in your profile. So as people are scrolling, they can begin to see more about who you are and what you're interested in. Another thing is include topics that interest me. This is important for people who might be looking at you as you're in the audience and deciding to pull you up on the stage. And the last thing is do not forget to connect your social media accounts. You will be surprised at the kind of business opportunities that will present themselves on this app. Once you've been on Clubhouse for a few days, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is start and moderate a room. We've created an awesome video for you right here Check it out. And by the way, we've also got another video right here that you might find very interesting.